So um, in, to solve differential equations, we need to use uh, the complex exponential function. So I will try to uh, define that here. We're going to define that using uh, Taylor series, which you may learn in a uh, calculus class. Taylor series is a way of representing a function as a power series. Uh, so the Taylor series of the function uh, f of x about x equals 0, say, is the power series, which means it's a series uh, uh, in powers of x, constant plus a constant times x, plus a constant times x squared, plus a constant times x cubed, etc. So the Taylor series for f of x is such that the function and all of its derivatives evaluated at x equals 0 on the left-hand side is equal to the power series evaluated at x equals 0 and all the derivatives of the power series evaluated at x equals 0. So the constant term in the power series has to agree with f of 0, so is f of 0. The term proportional to x has to um, match the derivative. So when we take the derivative of the left-hand side, we get f prime of x and evaluate it at x equals 0. gives us f prime of 0. Equals the derivative of the constant is 0, plus the derivative of x is 1. So it has to match f prime of 0, right? And this term, because it's multiplied by x, will be 0 at x, when at f of 0 will still match f of 0. And then the next term in the power series is x squared. And when we take the second derivative of f and evaluate it at 0, the first two terms of the power series vanish. x squared becomes 2. We want to cancel that 2. And we want it equal to f double prime of 0. And if we keep going, we'll have a x cubed. When we take the third derivative of x cubed, we get 3 times 2 times 1, which is 3 factorial. And then the third derivative of f, etc. So this actually 2 is 2 times 1, which we can write as a 2 factorial. And then there's a 1 factorial hidden here, and if you like, 0 factorial if you define 0 factorial to be 1. So this is a ta Taylor series. And we can, uh, sometimes it converges, sometimes it doesn't. You uh, study that in calculus. It turns out for the exponential function and for the sine and cosine function, it converges for all x. We can compute the Taylor series of the exponential function. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So e to the 0 is 1. That's our f of 0. f prime of 0 is e to the x. So f prime of 0 is again 1. f double prime of 0 is 1. x triple prime of 0 is 1. And we get a very nice Taylor series for e to the x. Okay. Now, if we get do that for trigonometric functions, if we do that for cosine x, we get cosine zero is one. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. Sine zero is zero. So the linear term proportional to x, the f prime of zero term is zero. The second derivative of cosine is minus cosine. So minus cosine of 0 is minus 1. So this term becomes f double prime of 0 is minus 1. So we get a minus x squared over 2 factorial. The cube term va vanishes, and we get plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus etc. That will be the series for cosine. Similarly, the series for sine, sine of 0 is 0, so the constant term vanishes. The derivative of sine is cosine. Cosine of 0 is 1, so the leading term here is x. 
the even powers cancel. The next term is x cubed over 3 factorial, and then x to the fifth over 5 factorial, etc. Okay. So these three series, e to the x, cosine x, and sine x, these three power series, have the nice property that they converge for all x. Okay. Now what happens if we consider e to the e to the uh, some power where that power is imaginary, right? So let's consider um, say um, e to the i y. Okay. So we don't know how to define e to the i y, but we can just define it from these power series. Right? So we'll use the definition of the power series. So then e to the i y is 1 plus i y, so x is i y, plus i y squared over 2 factorial, plus i y cubed over 3 factorial, right? Plus, uh, we could keep going here. And the um, key here now is to write, <coughs> excuse me, e to the i y, write that power series now as a complex number. So to write that as a real power series plus i times a real power series. Okay? Write that in the form of a complex number. So if we do that, we use the property that all even powers of i are real. All odd powers of i are imaginary, right? So we regroup the even powers. That will be the real part. So 1, we skip i, y. We have i, y squared over 2 factorial. i squared is minus 1, so that becomes minus y squared over 2 factorial. We have the i y to the fourth over four factorial term. Uh, i to the fourth is uh, i squared times i squared is minus one squared is one. So we'll have a plus y to the fourth over four factorial, right? And that will be our real power series. Plus i, the leading term here is y. The next term is i cubed y cubed over 3 factorial. i cubed is minus 1 times i, so we have a minus sign. y cubed over 3 factorial. And then the next term will be i y to the fifth. i to the fifth is i squared times i squared times i is plus i, so we'll have a plus y to the fifth over 5 factorial like this. And then we examine these power series and we see, hey, the first one is cosine y, the second one is sine y. So e to the i y then is equal to cosine y plus i sine y. Okay, a very um, important relationship. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if we look at e to the z, right, z is complex, is e to the x plus i y. What is the meaning of e to the z? Well, this is e to the x times e to the i y using the properties of exponential. e to the x is e to the real power. We know what that is. And now we know what e to the i y is. So this is e to the x cosine y plus i sine y, okay? So it allows us to work with um, complex exponentials, okay? Now, uh, finally, uh, we can use this complex exponentials to look at the uh, polar form of a complex number 
the polar form of a complex number is uh, can be quite useful. We plot a complex number in a two-dimensional plane. We write the real part of z on the x-axis, the imaginary part of z on the y-axis. We put our z here as x plus i y. And then we represent z as a uh, vector coming from the origin. Okay. That vector has a length. The length we can get because we know the real part of z is x. The imaginary part of z is y. From the Pythagorean theorem then, the hypotenuse here is the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's the modulus of z, right? And the angle here is some theta. So what is x? So first of all, the modulus of z is our hypotenuse, root x squared plus y squared, right? And then what is x? Well, we know from trigonometry, x is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of this angle, z times cosine theta. What is y? y is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of this angle. So then what is uh, z, right? Well, what is theta? First, we should say here that the tangent of theta we know is y over x, opposite over adjacent, right? So theta depends on what quadrant, the arctangent depends on what quadrant uh, z is in. So we can just express the tangent as y over x. So then what is z? Well, z is x plus i y. So that's equal to z modulus cosine theta plus i z modulus sine theta. And that's equal to z modulus cosine theta plus i sine theta. And here we get our complex exponential. So z is equal to the modulus of z times e to the i theta, right? Where theta is the angle that the vector z in the complex plane makes with the x-axis. So this polar form can be very useful, right? So if we have um, uh, z is this, for instance, if w is equal to the modulus of w times e to the i psi, uh, right, then z times w can be written as the modulus of z times the modulus of w times e to the i theta plus psi. So it allows us to do multiplication uh, of two complex numbers uh, very easily by multiplying the modulus and by adding the angles that the complex numbers make with the x-axis. We'll find that to be uh, very useful later on.